Hello, I thought I would start a quick series where I just go through uh, one exam question at a time. So we've just finished the ecology topic. If you are in my science class and you go to my school, um, if not, you might have studied a different topic. Um, and I'm going to run through some of the higher level questions that could come up in this topic. I've got a whole bank of ones that we can choose from, so we'll just pick a few to go through. Okay, so this question that I've chosen tonight is um, calculations, quadrat investigation calculations. So some students investigate the size of a population of dandelion plants in the field. And the diagram below shows the field. So I imagine that later we're going to need to work out the area of this field so that we can use it in a calculation it's based on the, on the heading. And the students used a one meter, one meter quadrat. So it's a one meter square quadrat. And they did it in 10 random positions. And then they counted the dandelions. And these are the results that they collected. OK, so we know that if we've done something 10 times, then we're probably going to have to work out a mean a bit later on, aren't we? OK, so why did the students place the quadrat in random positions? So the, word, the important word here is random. And the reason that we do random uh, distribution is because it is more representative of the actual population. Let's think about my spelling represented representative of real distribution. What might happen, you see, is that you come up to the field and you go, oh, look, there's dandelions, and you throw it over to where the dandelions is. Distribution. Anyway, so because of that, it's going to avoid any bias, which means it's going to be more precise or more accurate. OK, so that's the kind of language that we need to think about using. Estimate the total number of dandelion plants in the field Calculate your answer using information from the diagram and the table. Give your answer in oh, standard form. OK, so I knew it. We'd have to go back to here. So what we've got here is two rectangles if we divide that up. So we know that's 100. If that's 100, then we know that that must be 100 meters. And if that's 300 and we've taken 100 off, that's now 200. And if that over there is 150, then that is going to be 150 plus 100. So it's going to be 250 across there as well. So we've got 200 by 150 square. Let me go back to this answer. We've got 250 meters times 150 meters. Okay. And then we've got uh, 350 by 100. 350 meters by 100 meters. So uh, do a little bit of quick maths. So that's 350,000 and that must be 30, 20, 20,000, 20,000. Let me check that on my calculator. Okay, I'll just scroll back to the top to see my calculations up here. So I've got 200, 200 times 150, which is this bit here. So 200 times 150 is 30,000. And then this bit, which is 250 times 100. 100, which equals 25. Okay, so if we take those two numbers down, 30,000 to 25,000. So we've got 30,000, 25,000. So if I add those two areas together, I get a total of 55,000. Now, if we're working uh, out the number of dandelion plants, we also need to take some information from here. So we do need to calculate an average. So if we add all of these numbers together equals 60, um, 
I just work, added them on the calculator and divide that by 10 it means that there will be six dandelion plants per quadrat. So if we've got 55,000 meters squared, we're going to times that by the six dandelions, and that is going to give us a total of 330,000 dandelions. But to get the final mark, we need to write this in standard form. So if we look at this uh, number, what we want to do, there's our decimal place, bounce our decimal place back until there's one whole number in front of it. So we're going to end up with 3.3, .3, and then we just count how many factors of 10 did we bounce? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So to the power of 5. That would get us the full 5 marks there. Okay, and then it says quadrat 5, 7 and 8 were each placed less than 10 metres from woodland. So if we imagine this scenario here, we've got some woodland, okay, and some quadrats were placed quite near this woodland. And what we need to do is we need to investigate um, or come up with some sort of plan that's going to test this hypothesis. Light intensity affects the number of dandelion plants that grow in an area. Plan an investigation to test this hypothesis. So this really is thinking about how conditions change away from this area. So if we're thinking about the light intensity, we would expect if we've got a sunshine kind of there, that it's going to shine like that, and then that's going to leave this bit to kind of be a bit shady. Okay, so if we take our quadrat and we place our quadrats along a transect line from our trees. So we should remember this phrase, tran So we can mark out our transect line with a piece of string. There's our little posts that we stick in. There's our piece of string. And these are our quadrats, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We do the same thing. So we, we're going to draw our transect line. We're going to place our quadrats, count, count the number of dandelions. But we're also going to have to make sure that we measure the light intensity. each quadrat and then you'd be able to plot a graph wouldn't you be able to compare where there's low light intensity where there's high and you would expect that if we're kind of looking at dandelions wanting you would have lots there you'd have less You should just get more and more as you get away from the tree like that. Okay, so the method would lead to the production of a valid outcome. All key steps are identified. So I think we've covered all the key steps there. We've placed the quadrats. Uh, we've used a large number of quadrats. We've thought about uh, not really randomness, but we've used a, a transect so that we've got a kind of we're not choosing the positions they're equally measured along, um, making sure that we've looked in the near the tree and away from the tree, and then making sure that we have counted the number of dandelions and compared the light intensity. So that, in theory, that plan would get us all the marks that we need for that question. And then we've got one question left. Light is an environmental factor that affects the growth of dandelion plants give two other factors, environmental factors. So we're thinking about things in the environment. So these are going to be your abiotic factors, non-living factors. 
and we learn a whole list of these things so it could be temperature it could be uh, water availability or moisture or any sort of other word linked with that like rainfall in the area we could talk about soil ph so if it's too acidic or too alkaline then they're not going to be too keen on it and uh, the num the amount of mineral uh, ions in the soil and uh, wind number of herbivores in the area if the field like the jaffa is covered in rabbits they could be eating them uh, they could be trampling on them so these are the kind of factors that really we would consider hope you found this helpful i will continue this little exam series as we go along um, and we'll see how we get on as the summer progresses